Hi everyone, I'm Matt Hildebrandt and this is The Get Mad Show. Today our guest is Linda Serrato, who is running for New Mexico State House District 45. Let's go. So welcome to the show today, Linda. How uh, We're really happy to have you here. Yeah, thank you for inviting me. I'm really excited to be here. It's it, this is and, you know it's just exciting to get to interview all of these different candidates and it's exciting to see to see you running this time around and um, what we would like to do first as we always do is just have you introduce yourself to the public not as a candidate but just as who you are and you know maybe who is social distancing with you things like that. Sure, absolutely. So uh, my name is Linda Michelle Serrato. Uh, I'm married to my husband, Matt, and we have a two and a half year old daughter. Her name is Alma and our dog Hemingway Batman Ibarra. <laughs> he, uh, he's a, we, we rescued him eons ago and he's really her older brother. So he's kind of one of those cool dogs that knew when we were pregnant before we knew. Uh, and then and his and doesn't necessarily like Alma all the time, but likes that she drops food, likes that they, uh, you know, they can cuddle together. So there are moments they have, they're really nice. Um, so that's my, my little social distancing group. And it's been, it's been, you know, it's been challenging. My daughter usually would go to daycare and she had all these little friends there. And so she'll ask us about them. She'll be like, when do we get to see, you know, Zeodora? When do we get to see Riley? And, uh, you know, it's, it's little changes like that, but she's, she's, I mean, kids are durable as heck. So, um, so she's pretty much been my obsession <laughs> ever since we had her. Um, but, you know, otherwise we, we do normal things. Like we love watching baseball, football, hockey, um, I guess that's a little bit of a unique one. Um, and basketball is always a classic one too. So, you know, I mean, I think those are pretty normal things for us that we do. And, and really, thank goodness, thank goodness the outdoors is so close for us, right? Like we can just go for a 10 minute drive and we're on a great hike. So we've been doing that a ton. It's been great. Yeah, that, that sounds like, you know, that's fun. You're watching all these sports and you're doing all this stuff and, and still getting to hike. And, you know, that's, that's one of the things that, you know, if you like to go out and just do some of those things, it still can be done around people's houses. And hockey is not a strange one for me. I was a black bear. I'm a black bear from Maine. <laughs> not really from Maine. <laughs> I went to, yeah. I went to college, University of Maine, black bears. So <laughs> hockey is a big thing up there. <laughs> Yeah, I really got into it. I was shocked how, I mean, it's an exciting sport, even though, because I was a kid, I'd be like, you only scored twice, who cares? But then I started watching, I was like, holy goodness, there's a lot of good stuff on here, so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like it. roller derby on ice, baby. <laughs> yeah, really, yeah. really. And we actually, before the shutdown, um, or social distancing started, we were taking her to youth hockey games just to watch, and she was, to she was like yelling at the players, not, not offensively, but like, go team and score, and Ooh. I was like, you're two years old, how do you know what's happening? But they're just, they're little sponges. So it's a lot of fun. Yeah, it is a lot of fun. Well, what isn't fun is the idea of what's keeping us all at home right now. And, um, and that is COVID-19, the pandemic. So um, I know that uh, you would, it, it's a lot the same everywhere, but it's also a little unique in various places too. So could you talk about what's going on with COVID-19 in your district and, and what yeah, you're absolutely. seeing? So in this district, it's mostly, I would say, working class families. Um, I talk a lot, before social distancing, we had knocked on over a thousand doors. We talked to a lot of people and it was really clear, two things. One, that we had intergenerational families. So grandparents are really active in raising their grandkids, not just, you know, setting an example. And that two, we had a lot of um, working families with working class, uh, working uh working class progressives is what I'd say. And so that, that's really kind of who makes up the district. And it's been interesting since we've had to switch to, to, um, to phones, you know, people are, people are asking because we're, we're, we're a tourist town. You know, when do we think that we're actually going to get folks back? And that's really hard um, because you have a lot of gallery owners, you have a lot of people that produce art, um, you know, and, and everyone just wants to know when they're going to be back to normal. Like I was talking about daycare a bit with, about my daughter. Um, you know, we have folks that when can our kids go back to school? When can we have that, that normalcy back? So that I think has been tough. Um, in Santa Fe, it, we do have the luxury that, you know, we, we do, we are a higher income county. So we, we have been social distancing fairly well and using masks. And I think that's been good. And we're seeing that continue. Yeah, well, that's, that's really good. Cause I know that um, um, some places are having a lot of trouble um, having the populace want to do the social distancing, distancing and the masks. And those are the two things that are going to make it possible for us to reopen. Mm -hmm. um, can you uh, spend a minute and just kind of talk a little bit about your district? Because so that 
uh, you know, a lot of times people don't even know what their own district is like. Yeah, absolutely. So this district stretches from, I'd say St. Well, it does stretch from St. Francis, um, which is a main uh, thoroughfare up here. And it goes down Zia, which turns into Rodeo, which turns into Airport Road, and then it cuts off at 599. And so, and it goes down to the freeway. And that has a lot of different populations in that one area. Um, because really, at where, where Airport and Rodeo meet, there are very different parts of the community. And I would say our community in general, it's newer um, than a lot of the rest of Santa Fe. Um, a lot of the issues that we run into are, um, you know, very unique to our population. We, we do, have a, a, you know, neighborhoods where it's new immigrants, um, you know, uh, people that English may be a second language or may not speak English. Um, we have a lot of, you know, great stores from different places here, which is really nice. Um, a lot of folks that, you know, may have moved to Santa Fe 40 years ago, raised their family and now are, you know, state. Um, and so that's been really good. But I think what we want to see more of is, you know, bringing schools back to our community. Um, we've seen a lot of depletion of good schools or, or schools in general, um, where that's moved further north. And we want to see them back here. And we also need, you know, to make sure that we're taking care of the communities as much as we can. Um, like there, there's just some issues that come up and then we need to make sure that there's a voice there um, because they, it's a big issue. Yeah, and that is one of the things that we've seen is um, the consolidation of schools and school districts. And I think that um, we're beginning to see some of that um, turn back around, not just in New Mexico, but, but around the country. And it might be something that we're going to see out of this COVID um, that, that might become a little more um, insular in various communities. I, I don't know where we're going. We'll, we'll see what is happening. I know that another topic that, um, that interests you is the idea of the budget. And I know we're going to have some problems with the budget coming up if you're elected because we're going to see some money shortfalls coming in right. uh, because of oil and gas. But let's talk about the budget. Yeah, absolutely. So, I, I mean, I think there, in the past, whenever we've had like a recession in the state, what we've ended up doing is, is referred back to austerity measures that really do either put more taxes on the middle class because you can add a grocery tax because everyone buys groceries. It's a quick fix to the economy. Let's do that. And it really just hurts our middle class families. Um, I mean, with the social security double tax. And so up here, especially, you see a lot of middle income seniors that are you know struggling to pay that. And so they need to inject more money into the economy. They need to be a part of that too. Um, and the past two governors, we were able to slash taxes for the top 1% and co corporations. And it's so easy to make those cuts, but so hard to cut for the middle class. It's really, it's really difficult. Um, so we need to see more asking them to pay their fair share, but then also looking not for austerity, but that the state is, is the social safety net for everyone else, for the counties, for the cities, for our villages, for everything. Um, and and, and that, that will that will be difficult, but that's what we need to do. Make sure they pay their fair share so that we can be that safety net and invest more in making sure we're getting those federal grants that will make a difference for our communities. Grants for arts, grants for um, you know public safety, grants for schools, all those things the federal government's going to be offering. We need to have an active team to, you know, um, trying to, to, to get those before other states do. Yeah, and that's really important um, when we see so many of those things go like to Mitch McConnell's Kentucky. And, um, and you just really have to be proactive to try to be right there, Johnny on the spot, and grab as much and bring it back here because, you know, people, people don't remember New Mexico. And New Mexico does come so often at the bottom of lists. Well, it's also at the bottom of the list of people thinking about sending money home. And, and that's important to be right there to grab that. Um, so yeah, and I one other thing real fast on that, I think that is something where you can really see a state and federal uh, partnership to make sure that when something comes through and one of those folks on the Hill sees it, they can immediately say, hey, does anybody have a program that, that's, that's perfect for this? And we can really right. be actively helping them. Mm -hmm. Right. That, that is so true. Um, and while we're talking about the budget, the thing that is really going to cause trouble here in New Mexico is the fact that we're so reliant on oil and gas. And with this um, oil war that's been going on between um, the Saudis and Russia, which has dropped the bottom out of our state's income, because that's, that's where everything comes from. And um, so can you talk a little bit about, about the environment and what your plans are in that uh, yeah. regard? Yeah, so I'm, I'm the only campaign in this race that doesn't take any money from fossil fuels, um, fundamentally because I think it has such a great influence on our, our state legislature, we need to limit that as much as possible. And so, and I've worked, you know, across northern New Mexico, I've worked in, you know, down towards Hobbs and Lee County, and I've seen, you know, 
how that's the economic stimulus. But that's the only options we've given those communities. We've said, we're not going to invest in any other economic development. We're not going to invest in widespread broadband and, and do more focus on you know, how we can promote you to other businesses and industries. This is it. This is what you got energy. And that's what we did to in the, the Northwest when it came to uranium mining. That's what we did with cal, you know, coal. We were doing coals in the 70s. And we, we celebrate these moments. We have all this money, but then it ends up really hurting us long run because it, it runs out because th those are short-term economic gains. And we really need to be looking at sustainable futures. So, you know, I think for, for me, what I look at when I see the shortfall that happened, I mean, remember we passed a budget or they passed a budget in the roundhouse. And then four weeks later, the governor couldn't sign anything. And that's not basing your budget on something solid. That's basing it on a gamble. And we need to make sure that we're attracting new businesses, building our infrastructure, bringing in those new industries so that we're not reliant on something that's not going to work in the long run. Right. Right. And, and uh, that is uh, so true that we, we really need to be broadening our, um, our income base um, and, and just watch what happens there. But along with that, uh, what's going to be really important to make that happen is pandemic recovery, because it's yeah. our, our businesses are being incredibly hurt, and particularly small businesses, community businesses, and then you know, families, because we all have to work. So can you talk about, um, about what you're seeing for our recovery from this pandemic? Yeah, and I spoke a little bit on it too, but you know, when I, so I worked on Capitol Hill during the economic recovery from the Great Recession, which is two big uh, crashes in my lifetime, in your lifetime, and it's, it's a lot for, for um, what's happening to, to our long-term ability to, to, to build, um, um, you know, capital. And so I think that's something to, to think about as well. And so when we're talking about, um, you know, pandemic recovery and how we can really make sure we're protecting folks, it's through those grants. It's making sure, when I always go back to this a lot, um, we're, we're investing in infrastructure like education and broadband across the state and really doing it. You know, I know there's some folks that are flirting with some of those ideas right now. It's getting those grants to pay for it. And then, you know, people often forget, but outdoor recreation produces more jobs in the state of New Mexico than oil and gas does. And I think we need to remember that if we want to bring back tourism, we have to keep our outdoors healthy. We have to keep our, our natural resources available. In Clovis, New Mexico, they're five years from running out of water. And that and that's getting more you know tenuous as we speak. So we have to make sure we're protecting those pieces to bring people back in the state. Um, I think that's going to really help people in the long run. And then just again, we have to be aggressively helping people and not pulling back from them because that's what states that recovered faster than us the last time around did. And we can do that too. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think you're right. And, um, and I think that one thing that has that you see when we're talking about all of these different topics, everything is touched by, by COVID-19. Every, everything, you know, recovery, businesses, healthcare, everything is just in this big circle that has been so dramatically affected. And, um, and it, it looks like you've, you've combined a lot of those things and you're seeing those threads and putting them together. And I think that's, that's a real smart approach. Thanks, so, yeah, it's, I mean, there's so many challenges our families are gonna be faced from this and they are in the middle of it now, you know? Yeah, yeah absolutely. So we're at the very end and um, I would like to give you uh, another minute to do your standard stump speech to speak directly to the to your voters, the constituents, and tell them why they should be voting for you this time around. And also make sure to give them your website. Thank you. Um, so I'm running because my daughter's future depends on it. Um, you know, like I mentioned in my lifetime, when I graduated from college, it was amidst the Great Recession. We had friends sleeping in parking lots, graduating from Stanford University, had to sleep in parking lots because they couldn't find jobs. And then we started building, we have a family, now we're raising our family amidst a pandemic. And so I think we need to do right by the next generation so that doesn't keep happening. Um, and you know, what I've been running on and what I stand by, you know, even before the pandemic was that we need social safety nets like paid sick leave, paid family leave, ending the social security tax, living wage statewide. Because if we value our workers at that level, then businesses also value them. And we've seen in other places, we see them value them like that in Utah and in, in Colorado. I mean, that's something that we can build here and that our, our families deserve as well. So making sure that we're also protecting people as well. My campaign has been endorsed by a number of different, um, you know, democratic and progressive groups, uh, specifically Planned Parenthood's endorsed, the Sierra Club, Conservation Voters, uh, the Teachers Union, AFT, um, the Firefighters Union, the Professional Firefighters of Mexico, a number more. You can see them at lindafornm.com, and that's L-I-N-D-A, 4-F-O-R-N-M, as in New Mexico, dot com.
thanks so much, Matt. I really appreciate your time. Oh yeah. Well, thank you so much for, um, for coming and joining us. We really appreciate it. And thank all of you out there for coming to, to view this, this edition of Get Mad and our, and our special guest today, Linda Serrato. Uh, make sure that you do go to Linda's website and check her out. Make sure that you are um, fully prepared and then make sure you go and vote. Make sure you vote in primary and make sure you vote in the general election because both of those are exceedingly important. And make sure, uh, above all, that you educate yourself to um, what your candidates stand for. And also make sure that you click the subscribe button down below so that you don't miss any of these interviews. And thank you again, thank you again Linda, so much for being here. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thanks, yeah. everyone, for watching. This is awesome. Thanks. And, and thank everybody out there, and we'll see you next time.